Using AI to never die. That is what Brian Johnson gets into his conversation with the Flagrant Podcast. And the topic of faith and God comes up. Long story short, we're going to get into Brian's story in a minute, but basically he is someone that made a lot of money and decided to solve the existential crisis problem of how do you live forever? Well, the good news for, for many of us is that those of us who are in Christ Jesus will live forever, but he wants to live forever here and now. So listen to how Brian describes God, and then listen to his deconversion story of leaving the Mormon church. And I think there's such a practical warning to all of us here if we're not careful with how we view our faith, how we view the practice of our faith, okay? So uh, go ahead and play this. This is um, Akash actually pushing back on Brian Johnson's desire to live forever by optimizing all these aspects of his health, which I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to take better care of your body. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it becomes the sole purpose for one's life, um, and this guy's a vegan, which is kind of like, what are you even talking about when it comes to nutrition? You know, <laughs> I kind of check out. But uh, go ahead and play this. I have a question. You've left Mormonism, your faith. What's your relationship with God? Oh. I think it's one of the most beautiful ironies of our existence. I mean, the universe is irony, ultimately, every time you look at this. And so the story has been God created man, and now we're doing this thing. That's If you look at the stories, all religions tell. It's typically that same tale. I think the truth is evolution created man, and man's going to create God. Okay. Or we will become God or something like that. Because that's what, so as a Okay. All right. So, wow. God created man. And I thought he was going to go. And then man continued to create different versions of God through religion. That, that, that's kind of the woo woo answer. Yeah. Right. And that's why I'm spiritual, but not religious. This dude went straight to you know, evolution created man. And then we created God. That's not ironic. That's just a humanistic worldview, yeah. right? Secular humanistic worldview. That, that is where he's coming from. So what he's saying, what he's getting at is that there's nothing supernatural. There's no spirit. There's no soul. You're just the biological bag of flesh. Yuck. Go ahead and play it. Religious person, I think most faiths kind of say we all have God within us. Yeah. But then also if they say kind of the goal of life is to break free of the life cycle, whether it's heaven and hell, whether it's breaking reincarnation. So as a religious person, yeah. it's and, interesting. And Akash is Hindu, by the way. So he's coming at this from that perspective. He's full on saying that we be we are God. And I don't think he's saying that in a new age, you know, Eckhart told there's one consciousness and that consciousness is in you and Christ is that consciousness and God is that consciousness and you are God because of the consciousness. I don't think he's saying that. I think he's saying that humans become God. I think that's what he's getting at. Mm, like enlightenment vibes. Yes. Here, you, part of me really agrees with what you're saying. Like, yeah, we all have the ability to be God, right? You could solve humanity. Yeah. Like God would make a utopia, like God would. And then part of me is very unsettled by this idea of living forever and never, like essentially rejecting the goals of all religions. Yeah. Yeah. This is such a delicious conversation because I remember in Mormonism. <laughs> delicious. Where, um, <laughs> like your. Delicious is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so. Your okay. your, when your diet is so bad that the, the conversation has to be delicious because yeah, your food so isn't. Because like, you're eating <laughs> raw nuts and freaking broccoli all vibes. day. This guy's 46, okay? And he's spending millions of dollars on his health. He looks great. <laughs> 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 all right, uh, keep going. You have these rules to obey. Yeah. And if you obey these rules, you get the prize. Yeah, and the prize is an afterlife. The only thing you care about. You made a few hundred million. You're like, I got so it. notice, notice how he described faith. You got these rules. You obey these rules. You get an afterlife. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep playing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a mirror. Yeah, you know, it's like so. You, you, if the world burns around you, not only do you not care, you see it as fulfillment of scripture. Yeah. <laughs> so I like presupposition number one: keep rules, go to heaven. Presupposition number two, if the world goes to hell in a handbasket, that's fulfilled prophecy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Like things are, are going according to plan. I have no responsibility to fix the world. I have no responsibility. Like, this is great. Like things are going really well. So my only responsibility is to play the rules of the system. And that really poses a very serious question because we can be respectful of all ideas. And then there's a very practical moment where we say, we may all die. And maybe we think we have this safety net where we're going to get this afterlife. Maybe we don't. But it creates a, f a real fracture in the species. And so this is what, I guess, why I come back to Don't Die is the most played game on planet Earth every day 
every second of every day is don't die. Yeah. We all <laughs> breathe every yeah. few seconds to not die. If something happened in this room and we felt threatened, we would leave this room because we don't want to die. Mm -hmm. It's our number one priority, more so than this conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so every human on the planet, every second of every day plays don't die. Now you take one step above don't die and we fracture into a billion different games. We care about different things every moment of every day. And so if we have to say as a species, if we have to align ourselves around, around one thing, don't die. And so in that way, I think every religious group could come together this and say- This is a new faith, don't die. I mean, it is. It's, it's already our faith. Yeah, <laughs> it's a new <laughs> faith. It's a new faith. Okay, you guys keeping up with, with, with the presuppositions. Mm -hmm. Okay, now by the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with playing don't die. Don't freaking speed. I don't know, wear a seatbelt. Fine. Point number three is this is a new faith. It's a new religion. Mm -hmm. Okay, now keep playing. I'm going I'm to show, you, faith, it's already show you another presupposition in a second. More than capitalism, it's played yeah. more than anything in existence. And now, like, I'm not saying this to argue as if I'm right, but there is a difference that it's don't die for that finite amount of time. You want to extend it, but the idea of living forever is different than. But given the opportunity to live forever, who's saying no to it? But see, the thing is, on don't live forever, it breaks the human brain. On don't live forever? Uh, on, on living forever. On living forever. On living forever. Yeah. Like, we cannot understand what it yeah. means to live forever. So you say those words. Yeah, I don't know if I want that. Exactly. You're saying. Don't die is more digestible than live forever. Exactly. Like, we already have a belief that we will live forever. Like as a religious person, you have this yeah. idea that our consciousness and our soul will prolong. Yeah. So like, have, have you read Denial of Death? Are you familiar with this book? I'm familiar with the book. I haven't read it. It's amazing. Shout, like, out, it's, it's shout out to him. His name's Mark, right? Yeah. He's Catholic. So he's like, no, no, no. I think we, we already have what you're wanting. We've had this for a long time. We've had, we've had like, this. This, this is this not whole, new. This whole live forever <laughs> thing and, and like get a new body. Like this whole thing is here. Your YouTube channel's cute, but like we've got it figured out. Yeah. It's like this idea that kind of like uh, brings together all these like different philosophers' ideas of like this exact principle that the ambient philosophy of all living things is don't die. Don't die. And that all yeah. things that we do, like even stand up yeah. comedy, like yeah. the approval of other people is yeah. to not get rejected by the in group to then prolong our existence. Yeah. And yeah, I just think at that point, like, as even if you're a religious person, you still believe that you will live forever. So it's kind of already baked into us. So it's actually the don't die is the ultimate cooperation game because everybody can have their various beliefs. Yeah, and, and still it's opt in. Totally cool. I, yeah, absolutely. everyone's cool. We're all going to cooperate. Together. You see, you were right. This is delicious, dude. Okay. Yeah. So you guys heard the presuppositions. Presupposition number one: keep rules, go to heaven. Presupposition number two is if you keep rules, you go to heaven. Presupposition number three is this is a new religion. Uh, we're all God. Now listen to this next presupposition. So I said, I'm going to make a whole bunch of money by age of 30. And then with money, I'm going to do something uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I set off to make money as the only objective. And then when I made the money, the question was, okay, I made it. Uh, what do I do? Like back yeah. on that 21 year old goal. Now you can so live forever to work your way out of the debt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. So the goal was just get as many, much you know, uh, money as you possibly can. And then you can make that change. Yeah. But it was always make change. At what point does it become, I'm going to stop us from dying? It was that thought experiment. So after I made the money, it was in 20, 2013, I made a few hundred million dollars from selling my company, Braintree Venmo. But then like my life was on fire. So I had three kids. I was depressed for a decade, chronically depressed for a decade. Suicidal? Yes. Oof. I desperately wanted to end my life. Like every day, it was my only wish. Okay. So you have this goal burning inside you, which is to save humanity. Yeah. And at the exact same time, you want to kill yourself. Yes. Wow. And that's wow. Like, it. Yeah. Put the oxygen mask on first, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's true. What they say. Yeah. It's legit. And, you know, I was in a 13 year marriage that we were struggling. And then I just sold my company that I was leaving my religion. So, like, everything was broken in my life. So, so he becomes very wealthy. He, his objective was just to make money. Mm hmm. And then in this process, he's struggling, he's depressed, he's leaving his religion. Now listen to how he goes on to describe his religion. And uh, so I first had to fix, get the mask on the face. And so in one year's time, I ended the marriage. I sold my company. I <clears throat> emerged from current depression and um, left, the, left the religion. Does anybody else find it interesting that he is unapologetically saying, I went after just making as much money as I can while at the same time participating in the said religion? Mm -hmm. that, that should tell you one of two things. Like either you didn't really follow a, like the right religion mm -hmm. or your religion allowed money to be your only North Star. Eesh. Right. But but that's the side point. Listen to this next point he makes. I moved to New York and you went to Brooklyn. Of and course, you went to a house. of course, he leaves his religion <laughs> and he moves to New York. Any of you guys that are like trying to like pursue something, if you think moving to Brooklyn of all places is a good oh, idea. Man. Uh, let me tell you, that's another false presupposition, but that's not even where I'm going with this. Keep playing it. House party for six hours. <laughs> I, I Is that to, true? I went to Brooklyn. I went to a warehouse party. I did. And it was my first time. I went with some friends and I, for the first time in my entire life, I started dancing. Yeah. <laughs> and it was because I grew up, you, like we didn't really move our bodies very much. Yeah. And I started dancing at midnight or one, whenever we started. I believe it's called soaking, right? <laughs> 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 that emerged after me. Like, ah, okay. I missed okay. that. <laughs> 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 you, you would have 
I'm so happy. <laughs> Dark. He's warm in his day. Yeah. So his hair would be forever changed if he could just soak it. <laughs> okay. For sure. Okay, okay go on. That's so, the presupposition number five uh, is that he thought dancing was bad. Yeah. <laughs> But it, no, no, it gets better. Trust yeah. me, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Just bear with me. I promise you I'm going somewhere with this. Because, yeah, play play the rest of this. For six hours. So he never danced. Asking. He never danced until after he moved to Brooklyn and attended a warehouse party. Keep going. My friend. Molly? 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 Where? Were you on some? Uh, no. No drugs, just, nothing? This is just sober. Uh, yeah, just, from Mormon, it's like, you know, you don't need the Mormon. Mormon's still party. <laughs> no, he was drinking Mormon's a lot party? in his unhappiness. No, 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 no alcohol, no caffeine. Were you not drinking a lot? like music and dancing. So tame. It's so tame. Yeah. Did we, I saw. I thought you were drinking a lot uh, before that, right? When you were depressing. That's still okay. No, no, yeah, it's just not part of the culture. Okay, yeah. So yeah, it's so you're dancing, like, you're rocking, and what yeah. does it feel like? Is it the greatest night of your life? Best night of my free, life. Free to this day. To this night? like on one of wow. the biggest, one of the most important moments of my entire life, and it was just like my mind up until that point had Listen, I had lived in an existence it, it, where it was here's what you can do as a human, a list of things you can and can't do, and that moment it became a list, uh, not a list. It just became everything I could do. And my body moved me, what moving was this representation of my mind now being able to move in any direction it wanted. Mm -hmm. And it was just this spectacular moment of existence where I, I don't know, somehow unlocked the body, unlocked the mind, and it just worked And in a warehouse in Brooklyn. So foundationally, his, this is what his faith was. Do good things, keep rules, do works, go to heaven. If the world goes to hell in a handbasket, that's okay, because that, that was fulfilled. Now, and then another presupposition is he, uh, uh, he had never danced before. Yeah. Okay? And then he said he went through, through life thinking about things, do's and don'ts. And, uh, and now, ultimately, he's in a place where he believes that we, we created God and we can be God. Okay? So there, there's so much here, but, like, here's the punchline, friends. Um, this isn't what the Bible teaches. The Bible does not teach that if you keep a bunch of rules, you will get to heaven. The Bible does not teach that you have no responsibility and no need to do anything good on this earth, and that if the earth goes to hell in a handbasket, wipe your hands clean. The Bible does not teach a bunch of do's and don'ts. So everything he's describing, I'm like, yo, you were in a false religion. Mm. Yeah. Right? Like unequivocally, and I don't want to dunk on all people in false religions, but this is absolutely a false religion. Scripture, scripture teaches us that we're saved by grace through faith to good works, not by doing good things we get to heaven because there's not enough good things you can do to get to heaven. Right? Scripture does not teach us that uh, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, so you might as well check out because, well, people are just dumb and, and it's all. No, Scripture teaches us to go into all the earth because Jesus came into the earth and that the incarnation here is an example of our incarnation to go into the earth and do good and make good things. Not because that's how we're saved, but because that's our reasonable responsibility because we're saved to do good. And then on top of the cherry on top is the lack of healthy theology around pleasure you never danced before bruh you never danced before you ain't never had a glass of wine you didn't drink caffeine so what what happened is he was following a false religion and is now creating another false religion where he becomes god which mm. ironically don't quote me on this but isn't that the conclusion of what mormons want to be in the afterlife is that it they want to be a god they they i Again, don't quote me on this, but I believe that's the logical conclusion of where the Mormon thing goes is everybody kind of becomes their own God with their own earth. Wow. So it's a lot of responsibility. That sounds very uh, wonky to me. All of that sounds very wonky to me. Like your faith is not about rule keeping. And, and so when he says like, now I just see, now I just look at life as things I can do. I'm sitting there thinking, bro, that's how I've always looked at life. I get to do a bunch of fly cool <laughs> things. Yep. Right, and anything that I quote unquote can't do because I'll quote unquote break a rule is stupid for me to do anyway. It's stupid for me to be like, oh, I want more than one wife because I'm a high value man. That's stupid. That's dumb. That that would hurt my family. That would hurt my wife. That would hurt the people that love me the most. 
oh, I, I want to go and dance in Brooklyn and get high on Molly and X. No, that's stupid. That would hurt me. That would hurt my people, right? All the things that I'm not supposed to want to do or I'm not supposed to do are the very things that would hurt me. So I never look at like, oh, I, I, I guess I can't like go get a prostitute because I'm so repressed sexually. No, 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 I just, I don't have a desire to go get a prostitute because that's stupid. Sin is stupid, <laughs> right? So unsanitary. I, it's unsanitary. Yeah, where's it, it ever? <laughs> so I, I, I'm just so confused on how someone comes to this conclusion, and that never reevaluates and, and examines another conclusion. Instead, instead, they just put down this false religion and then just build another false religion. We see, according to the Bible, that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel. I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think would be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.